Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. I'm Kiara, this is my co-founder. Hey, I'm Matt. And we are the co-founders of CircleView. CircleView helps manufacturing managers improve efficiency and communication without uh, needing to be on site. If you guys want to learn more about uh, what we're actually doing, feel free to reach out. You can reach us on LinkedIn or well, just reach us on LinkedIn and <laughs> we'll get back to you pretty quick. Okay, so today we are going to take a dive into the mind of my intelligent co-founder, Matt. He's really passionate about Industry 4.0 and um, many people don't really even know what that is or how it's happening and <laughs> what's, what all it entails. So uh, Matt is pretty passionate about it and would like to help us have a better understanding. So what is it, Matt? Yeah, so um, first off, uh, there's like, there's a number of different terms that are, I would consider interchangeable that to me mean the same thing. Uh, industry 4.0 is kind of this umbrella term that means um, how the manufacturing sector is adjusting and being changed due to new technology. So why it's called Industry 4.0, um, there are four industrial revolutions. Uh, the first one was steam way back in the 1700s. Uh, second one was electrical power in the 1800s. The uh, third one in the 1960s, I believe, was the use of computers. So PLCs, uh, logic, that type of thing, adding that into the manufacturing process. Now we're at the fourth one. Uh, and that it, it, uh, it's comprised of um, use of data. So, so generating data and um, taking that data to make intelligent decisions about your operation. So, you know, I, I said there's uh, a number of different terms. You, you may hear smart manufacturing. Uh, you may hear Internet of Things or Industrial Internet of Things or IoT or IIoT. Um, you know, there's probably other ones that I'm missing too, but they all kind of mean this, this new concept or this new way of working in manufacturing, um, working smarter, using our data uh, to, to just uh, make things better. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, when actually did it start? <laughs> Do you know? I mean, Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I think I first really started to hear about it maybe 2015, 2016 or so, but it, you can really, you can make an argument. It's been happening since the nineties in, in some respects, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really, it's become a huge trend in the last five years, I think is really where it became this big buzzword. And, okay. So, I mean, every, every other um, industry, you know, it's steam, electricity, computers, uh, I mean, I don't, I didn't hear one thing that describes the industry 4.0. What's that thing? <laughs> yeah, it's, this is a also sometimes kind of tough to answer, but if you think about how our lives just around our house have changed with technology, you know, in the past 10 years or so, um, everyone or most people have a, a computer in their pocket, you know, that they're using, they have your, you have your smartphone, and you use it for so many different things to make your lives easier. Um, you have things like Ring uh, or other uh, Google Home uh, that are uh, make, or making it easier or, or more um, giving you more insights into your house, like what's going on with that. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, of examples that I, but, but if you think about that type of concept and then you apply it to manufacturing. so. Um, whether it's, um, you know, getting more uh, computers or, or, or smart devices out on the floor for people to use and, and replacing paper, you know, or, or old technology, or it's um, capturing data, right, from, from a device that previously you didn't, you didn't really know, uh, or you didn't have a good handle of what was going on with a part of your machine other than when you went and looked at it. But if you put a sensor on there and you can capture some of that information and then send it to the cloud or send it to a database and uh, 
use software to to help you um, to help alert you or help you understand what's happening in real time. Um, there's other things like, you know, drones. So, so there's, there's, there's uh, facilities that are using drones to do remote inspections rather than having a person walk, you know, and then look at all these power lines. Like that's a big one in the power industry. You know, you, you want to have to do these inspections. Um, doesn't really make sense to send a person when you can have a drone go do it for you. Um, let's see what else there's, um, <laughs> I could go, I could go, you know, on and on about this, but does that, does that help you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not necessarily kind of a, a one thing. It's just this, this cluster of, of innovation that took place at once. Right. Yeah. And that's why I think that's why people get confused and they get overwhelmed by it because it can mean so many different things. And there's so many different directions you can go with it. There's so many um, software companies that are that have sprung up, or uh, devices, you know, smart devices, and how do you pick which one? And and so it gets it gets confusing and overwhelming. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So why are you so passionate about it? You know, what is it that that you know, what is it that lights you up? Yeah. About I, <laughs> so you know, I think. You know, people in manufacturing, um, we kind of know that it's a it's a sector that has been slower to evolve and embrace new things. Like it's always been that way. Um, and in my time in manufacturing, I started seeing these new technologies, these new opportunities with IoT or Industry 4.0. And I really think that uh, if you if you want to be a best in class manufacturer, if you want to be the best and you want to uh, improve and beat your competition, you're going to need to understand these technologies and start to use them uh, mm -hmm. because they will get you that extra 5%, whatever, um, you know, productivity or, or cost reduction. It's going to come from these type of technologies, especially when you talk about uh, manufacturing, um, you know, there's less people on the floor than there ever been. There's less people, there's less uh, operators, less supervisors, um, less uh, know-how because there's more turnover. You need to replace that somehow. And technology is where that comes in. So I thought that, you know, I've, I'm, I'm very passionate in that uh, to, to remain, you know, strong, like a strong industry, whether we talk about U.S. or whatever com country you're in, I really think that you're going to need to to embrace these technologies to stay competitive. Yeah. So um, what are some examples of ways that you've seen um, these technologies or industry 4.0 change uh, a situation? Yeah, so um, let's see. One of, one of the things I, I think about, just a real simple one, was uh, one time, um, you know, in my life in, in the plant, we had a machine breakdown uh, it had a very special part, very specialized part that, uh, you know, only one vendor made and we didn't know, you know, beforehand. And it was a, it was a, you know, a big time issue. And because this part, uh, only came from one vendor and it was a specialized part, it took four weeks for us to get that. And the machine was down for four weeks. We couldn't do anything. Like we couldn't make anything. We couldn't make those products on a different machine. It was a very specialized. So we had to sit there and wait for four weeks. Um, you know, meantime, you know, our customers were going with, you know, what's going on, you know, <laughs> why? <laughs> and, you know, so, um, so one of the, one of the, uh, I don't know if I'd call it core or, or first uh, facet of industry 4.0 uh, is, something called predictive maintenance or, or condition-based monitoring is another way to say it. But the idea there is that you have an asset, you have something like that where you have a specialized part uh, and you don't, you want to know beforehand that that thing's going to break. So you add in some sensors, uh, whether it's a vibration sensor, or maybe like a pressure temperature sensor and um you collect that data and then you, you either, uh, you know, you, you look at it and you, you can put it into a model or other uh, engineering uh, calculations 
and then um, then you can understand when something is starting to degrade. So there's something in maintenance called the P to F curve, where you have uh, a, a part that's or a machine that's working well, and over time it's going to degrade and go down and hit F, which is fail. Mm -hmm. So usually, as a as a human, like you know, the thing's going down, you're going to only see when it's starting to really degrade. But you can actually detect that much earlier if you use uh, an industrial sensor and software. And that gives you time to adjust to that. So if we would have had that in place, we could have potentially caught that before it happened, not had to wait four weeks to make something. Uh, we started to uh, go down that road with predictive maintenance, um, adding in sensors, you know, detecting uh, on, on the equipment that we were worried about. And we could see, you know, there, there was another time where we, we could see a high vibration on a motor. Um, we could send somebody out there to go look at it. And, you know, much earlier than the fail point. And you could, uh, you know, you could adjust your production schedule to meet that. Um, it's not a huge headache where you have to change schedules and, you know, move people around and uh, contact customers and things like that. So that's a, a maybe a long way, but that's, uh, uh, you know, one, one way that we were able to, to embrace those technologies. Sounds like it saved a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And headache too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So what, what particular um, part, so, you know, at the plant, what particular part is it that, that uh, you focus on uh, that helps you to be able to predict things and uh, yeah, just explain that. Yeah. So that it really depends on the asset. Okay. So there, um, if I, if we're talking about a motor, then you have to consider what are the most common ways that this thing is going to fail. So that, so when you're starting to look at predictive maintenance, it's like, uh, think about your most common fail modes and, th and then think about how those will happen. And then you can come with how are we going to measure something. So with the motor, it's almost always a bearing that's going to go. That's like the, one of the most common fail points. So you can detect that in most cases, at least in my experience, by vibration of the motor. Um, there's, you know, like with a heat exchanger, that's to something totally different, but you can detect the amount that it's actually working. So is it heating or cooling in the amount that it's designed for? And you can measure that by measuring the streams going in and out, you know, and then if you have your, your design of the heat exchanger, which you should have from your documents, you can come up with a theoretical amount and then you can measure your actual amount and then you can see over time how it's degrading. So it really depends on the, the asset that you're, you're trying to measure. Cool. Well, um, man, I mean, guys, if you're not doing this, you should be, <laughs> you should be doing this. I can imagine how, um, how difficult things might be if you're not predicting this in advance. Um, and this is, yeah. And this is just one, I'm, I'm just talking about one portion of industry 4.0, which is maintenance. Uh, this is, you know, so there's, there's a whole other, there's a whole other sections of this too. So. Yeah. Um, so um, you have a template, right? I do. So one of the things that I've known, noticed over the years, uh, just talking to people, going to conferences, um, there's always people that are interested, like, you know, they're interested in this topic. They're interested in industry 4.0, IOT, and they want to start it, but they just, they're like, it's, was talking about earlier they're just overwhelmed they don't know where to start it's everything's new uh they don't know how to pick what they're supposed to you know start with first mm -hmm. so um one of the tools that i made here and i'll share is a priority helper so the idea here is um we don't know where to start you know we want to get started in industry 4.0 but we just don't even know where to start. So um, this is just a simple tool. Uh, it's it's uh, if you've used Lean principles, this it's a CNE matrix. So it's, it's along those uh, along those lines. So 
Um, just quick, briefly here, the uh, in instructions. Um, let's talk about uh, where you are in the digitization journey. So I have an assessment tab here, and this is really high level. But the point here is that you have to walk before you can run. Mm -hmm. um, you can't skip ahead to having a full uh, digital twin predicting everything that's going to happen and automatically adjusting all your, your production lines. Um, you know, before you do the other steps. So uh, I, I kind of just broke it down again, really basic here, but uh, connecting is your first step. So are your machines connected? Are you able to gather information about your machines? You know, some, some uh, manufacturing sites aren't even able to do that. So that's uh -huh. the first thing you gotta do. Um, then are you able to see your data? So connecting to seeing. So meaning, can you, you know, build charts out of it? Can you understand what's happening? Um, at least with uh, with a graphical interface or something like that, where you can you can start to at least look at it and maybe you can make a pattern out of it. Uh, but you still have to do that as a human. Um, then I have my next uh, category here is deciding. So um, you're able to uh, connect to your machines, see the data coming from there, and then even from there, you can look at you know some sort of an interface and it can tell guide you into what you should be doing next to, you know, ideally the most profitable uh, decision. Hmm. And then, um, then it moves on to predicting and even prescribing. So predicting meaning, uh, you know, something could alert you and tell you before something's going to happen. Um, and then you can say, okay, this is going to happen. I, I as a person can make this decision to stop that or, or mitigate that from happening. The final thing is prescribing. That's where um, the you know something is telling telling you not only what's going to happen, but this is what you should do. This is the most the best thing that you should do to mm -hmm. be the most profitable. So it's a long way to get there, especially if you're at the beginning. But you you know you have to take these steps. Yeah. Um, so sorry, there's a little bit of an aside there, but that's where you know you have to understand where you're at before you start this, uh, this process, just at a high level. And again, it's, this may be different for different machines at your factory. You know, some might, some might be in the second or third or fourth category. Some might be in, not even in the first. Huh. Um, so there are, uh, you know, I have seen some people use this and they use this concept, you know, and you can use this or come up with your own way of, of talking through this but they've used this to walk through all of their machines or process lines and say, here's where we are today. You know, maybe we're in this column. I don't know, this column today. And for machine X, we want to get here. Uh, for machine Y, you know, it doesn't make sense to go there. Maybe we only want to be here. And, and you know, they've built out this roadmap of just in general, we want to go from here to here in five years, 10 years, something like that. So that's, that's just a good way to, clear. yeah, it's just a good way. And then you can revisit that every year and see if it still makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So then um, just, just understanding where you're at, um, you need to have some sort of a, of a an idea brainstorming session. So, you know, however you want to do that, um, you, there's, there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, all I have here is just write your ideas down, but, you know, I'll let you, you know, come up with your own way of brainstorming. Um, there are some just ideas here. So we talked, I, I did talk a little bit about predictive maintenance, um, but just to mention some other technologies. So, you know, real time status boards, uh, wireless networks. So, um, you know, we put in a wireless network at some of the plants that I worked at. Uh, which allowed us to add sensors much easier, so then you have to wire things up. Um, augmented reality. So when we talk about this new uh, remote, you know, situation, what augmented reality allows you to do is have a remote expert. So you could have somebody wearing a device or with a camera or something, and they could whoever's remote could direct you to help you fix something or, uh, you know, or uh, adjust an issue like, 
you know, circle, turn this valve right here and they could circle it on the screen. So just much easier to, to uh, solve issues that way rather than trying to talk over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, automated quality inspections, robotics. Um, I, I talked about drones. 3D printing is another one where there are places that have their own 3D printer. So I talked about this, you know, this expensive part. If you have a 3D printer that works in the way that you need it to, you could just print it yourself. Wow, you can make it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's people that are doing that. RFIDs, um, meaning, you know, there are, if you have a huge site, sometimes you lose things, right? You know, put our RFIDs on it for tracking where it is. Or you could have, um, you know, uh, a way to, to help, you know, a maintenance or, or a, even an operator if they're c confused about a certain um, machine or, or piece of equipment that they could, you could have like a QR code and they could scan it with something and that could give them all this information. Again, assuming you populate a database or you have a database to have this information, it could populate or it could give them information about the, the machine that they're wondering about, right? What is this thing? When was the last time it broke? You know, who's it from? What, where's the instruction manual? Uh, that's that's more of a QR thing, not an RFID. But um, digital twin, this is kind of like high end, but the idea behind that is you have a uh, digital twin of your factory or your process uh, that's built in a simulation. So then you could take that and whatever's running right now, you could say, what if I did this? What if I adjusted this knob? What if I you know turn this lever? What would happen? And you could use that to just figure out what was going to happen. And then you could make those changes if they become, you know, better for your operation. So that's just some of those ideas, but you, the, the idea here is to capture your ideas and to make sure that they make sense, that they're a problem that you're trying to solve. Hmm. So um, you may think, you know, like I do, I get excited about this stuff, right? So you may think, oh, it'd be really cool if we have drones, right? <laughs> but if it's not an actual problem, you know, like you don't actually need drones to do inspections, then you probably don't need to have that as an idea, right? But whereas, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so just be careful with that. So the idea here is capture your project ideas and make sure that they're solving a specific problem at your factory. So with predictive maintenance, that, that's kind of, everyone can kind of see how that one can solve a problem. Well, we have this, you know, we have this pump that is always giving us problems. Let's do some maintenance. Let's try some uh, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance on this pump, right? That, that, that could be one of the ideas. Okay, so, and then, oh, go ahead. So before, I mean, before you move on, cause I know you, I know you're getting excited. <laughs> you have a lot <laughs> more, but it seems like maybe people would get overwhelmed because they're thinking about, you know, all of the things they could do, you know, yeah. rather than just, you know, assessing things one at a time and thinking, okay, if I just start right here, you know, where's the, the biggest problem? If I just start right here, then I can make adjustments and eventually the whole plant, you know, will be upgraded. But yeah. Okay. Great point. Um, and, and, you know, maybe that you direct this brainstorming session into we're only going to focus on process line one, because that's where we want to do our first digital project. So give me all your project or your, all your process line one problems, and we'll try to come up with ways to solve them, you know, with, with automation or digitization there. So, you know, there's, there's different ways you can do that, but you're right. You could get, you could have 500 ideas if you don't put a cap on this right and then you don't know where to start and then you're yeah it was it even worthwhile so okay right. so um go for it yeah sorry go for it. so then okay you got all your ideas um and again you don't have to use the brainstorming tab but um you know you won't, you're going to want to collect them and then you're going to want to put them in this ranking. Again, this is a C and E matrix, may, may be familiar with something like this. But the idea here is there's going to be some sort of objectivity to our ranking to, to, so that we see which project, you know, which projects come up to the top that seem to make the most sense. So 
I put just a simple one together here. It has four categories um, and you're gonna go and you're gonna put your ideas in here and then you're gonna rank them. So let's say I put a couple in here. These are just dummy ideas, um, but let's say one of them is, you know, pump one uh, condition monitoring. Monitoring. Um, so again, these categories, review these categories first. So that make sure that they make sense for your business. Uh, these are just kind of general categories that have worked for other uh, prioritization um, sessions that I've done, but they may or may not make sense for your business. So just real briefly, I have four categories here. Uh, first one is cost. So how much is this gonna cost us? Um, when we rank these, uh, high number is good. So in this case, a low cost is a good number, right? So again, come up with your own criteria here. I just threw in some numbers, but say the, the cost of condition monitoring for this pump, let's say it's, I don't know, let's say it's three because we have to maybe get some software and we have to get some devices. Uh, next category here is timeline. Um, you know, uh, a quicker project is going to be better just so that we can get a win, understand some of this thing and move on to the next project. So let's say we think that that's going to be a three month project. We'll put a nine in there. Uh, next thing, cost benefit. Again, this can be tough, especially with a lot of these projects to come up with a cost benefit. Um, if you can, I would put it in here. Sometimes this can be a barrier though, and I would encourage people to not get hung up so much in ROI and, and especially in concrete numbers. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you think it's the right thing to do, a lot of times I've seen, uh, you just go and you do it. And then afterwards you start measuring, okay, this was a benefit in this amount. So just be careful there. But let's say we think, okay, pump one, it goes down this much time per year, equating to this much downtime, which means this much money. So, um, you know, maybe it's a three, I don't know. Okay, then this, I have a, a custom category. Again, you can go in and change these however you want. You can take them out, you can add new ones. Um, if you do add new ones, just make sure you fix the math here. It's real simple, it's just multiplying and adding. But um, this one, you know, sometimes there's, a uh, hot button issue that's affecting a certain customer. That's why I added this one in here. Maybe there's um, a safety issue that you're looking to solve and you want to rank something highly for safety or um, uh, I don't know, really anything you could put in here, just another criteria to rank. So let's say pump one, it, it go, it's on a line that affects our most important customers. So I'm gonna put a nine there. Okay, so then we come up with a 150. And then you just go down the line and you do that um, for all of your ideas. Now, uh, I will warn you here too, if you have you know, 75 ideas, this could take a long time if you start getting into arguments. No, that's a three, no, that's a nine. You can, you can do that a couple ways. You can have votes and just keep it really simple to uh, a really uh, strict time limit for each category. Or you can just, you know, at a time you have a discussion a quick discussion with with fewer people and maybe then you'll you'll uh you'll get it done faster so just another warning there this could get really tedious if you get into arguments about some of these categories so try and get through that and then when you're done you have a number of projects here and you have each one how they rank and then you can sort by the top uh so then you sort and you see which ones come to the top um now just because your top uh, number here is, is the top one doesn't mean you have to do it, of course, right? So make sure that what you came up with for a list uh, makes sense to you and, and, you know, and a gut feel like, okay, this is our top project. This makes sense. This is the one we're going to work on first. And then this is the one we're going to work on second. So you may have to adjust that a little bit, but hopefully this should get you an idea of where you can start. Yeah, so it sounds like the, the important thing, um, if you feel overwhelmed, is just to start. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just pick, you know, rank it and, and, and just get started. Uh, I mean, 
hesitation often, <laughs> often uh, our procrastination is really the, the killer, right? Isn't that a, yeah. a famous quote? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I, I would encourage you, uh, everyone along those lines, if you're interested, just, pit, just get started and do something. It doesn't have to be big. It can be a small project. It's, it can be a pilot. You can call it a pilot project. And you're going you're gonna to be some stumbling there, especially if it's your first one. Uh, but that you'll learn, you know, you'll learn from that. You'll learn what works, what doesn't. And then you can iterate and get, move on to your next project. You can expand your pilot or you can move on to something else. So you're right. Just get started. Yeah. This is great. Really simple, easy to understand. I feel like uh, it would really help some people who are struggling. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So um, this template we're actually going to include uh, depending upon how you're listening to this, it'll either be in a link or, uh, well, it'll be in a link. <laughs> guys, we, this is, uh, Matt's just passionate. He just wants to offer this to you guys to help out. Yeah. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be glad to talk you through some of this stuff, uh, give you my perspective and my experience. So, yeah, well, thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, guys, we're going to do these types of things often. Uh, we'll have an interview pretty soon. Um, so just stay locked in and we'll make sure to get you something new pretty quick. Thanks. Bye. Bye.